Hey guys, my name is Ismas and today we're going to be doing some hard surface modeling and uh, yeah, so we're going to be making a gaming mouse as you can see here and uh, yeah, also sharing some hard surface modeling tips. Yeah, so before we go into the time lapse, I just wanted to talk about, to touch on the fundamentals first and even show you uh, some of the major steps I used in this video so that when we go to the time lapse, it's very easy for you to understand what I'm doing uh, without need, needing to pause or slow, slow down the video. I also touch on the materials maybe in the next video, but uh, this is just uh, uh, the modeling part. If we go to the base mesh, let me turn on wireframe here. You can look at uh, how uh, the edges of the, the polygon flow. Now these are separate meshes but you can still see that uh, these edges are continuous or uh, these edges polygon here uh, so and uh, you can see that i'm maintaining sharp corners where they are without using a lot of polygons or a lot of edges or even using a bevel modifier uh, so i'm i'm making use of uh, the crease if i go to I'm making use of mostly creases so for example if i turn on a subdivision surface you can maintain a sharp edge by using what is called creases so if you select an edge like this you can use shift e and drag now that will create a sharp edge at that point but uh, you also need a few supporting edges uh, to have that edge maintained so shift e you can see that uh, we turn on shade smooth and uh, maybe increase and see how I'm getting a sharp edge around there. So this is what I'm doing here to maintain uh, those edges here. You can see I have a crease there. I have another crease here. Uh, just so I don't use a lot of polygons. And uh, the great thing about this is that uh, if I go and turn off all the subdivisions, so if I go to uh, render settings and turn off, turn on simplify, and uh, set the max pump subdivisions uh, turned off at zero. Uh, that's the equivalent of just switching off our subdivision surface here. And you can see it gives you this uh, red icon, meaning that the subdivision surface is off. Now, if I turn this off and see it's back to normal, but, uh, this is simply just turning off the overall all the subdivisions in your uh, in your in your scene. So if I have a Suzanne here with subdivisions, let me first time simplify. You can see we simplify all the other, other objects have their subdivisions on. If I turn that on, you can see I've disobeyed all the subdivisions in my area. One of the biggest um, mistakes I see a lot of beginners do is that when they use a subdivisions, when they use a sub, a subdivisions, uh, on their mesh, uh, they usually base the entire structure of their mesh on the subdivisions. What, uh, what I'm talking about is that, uh, say we wanted to create a cylinder from this uh, cube, uh, what most people would do is just add a subdivisions like this, let me first turn off simplify, add a subdivision like this, and uh, maybe add a supporting loop up there, and uh, a supporting loop down like that, then make this shade smooth. Uh, it looks like a cylinder, but uh, the base mesh is not really a cylinder. Uh, so if I turn off the subdivisions you can see it takes back its own structure of a cube uh, this is great but uh this is okay but uh, the problem is if say someone wants to use this asset in a game uh in a game environment then they would have to either apply the subdivision or find a way to uh to add most polygons or this asset is not going to be very useful to them because uh, they want a cylinder but this is not a cylinder, especially if uh, the turn off uh, the subdivisions uh, because you don't have subdivisions in games, in game engines. Uh, so either they will have to settle for this polygon count or just turn off, or just turn off the subdivision and uh, then uh, the, uh, the cylinder will turn into a cube, which is not something you want. So what you usually want to have is a half, let's add, before you add the subdivision, make sure that uh, even without the subdivision, the structure of your mesh is still visible. 
So for example, the way I would go about this is uh, just add a few subdivisions like this. Maybe even first delete this bottom one so that it's easy for me to uh, to turn this into a sphere. So if I select the S, this bottom egg loop and then hold on Shift Alt S, then one, you can see that uh, uh, this becomes is uh, rounded off. And then do the same for this. Now we have a cylinder. So if I, if I add uh, the subdivision surface and I add a supporting edge loop, let me first turn off this wire. Add a supporting edge loop here and down here, show it smooth. Let me also bring this back here. You can see they look the same with the subdivisions on, but when I turn on simplify, you can see this still retains uh, this spherical surface, it's low poly and uh, retains uh, the uh, the structure of the mesh even without subdivisions and uh, when I turn on subdivision it just polishes uh, the mesh and uh, that's what I, I always trying to maintain uh, when working on, sad, on hard surfaces. Uh, I make sure that uh, the subdivision surface just polishes the mesh but is not the, the structure of the mesh itself. Uh, so you can see if I turn off subdivisions here, the overall subdivisions, can see you can still tell uh, the structure of the mesh and that uh, it also still looks uh, low poly something that could be used in a game engine uh, if i bring this on so what you want to do is uh, make sure that uh, the shape of your object can still be can still be is still visible whether there's a subdivision surface or there is not so yes, in the, uh, so again in time lapse, all we're going to be doing is uh, just mostly using these creases. We're not going to use uh, the bevel modifier a lot. Uh, we're just going to use our creases to add in those support loops. So for example, if we wanted to add these kind of uh, handprints, just do it something simple here. subdivision surface all I would have to do is uh, add a few subdivisions and maybe select these edges here inset them but uh, I don't want this edge loop to be continuous I only want it to be to loop around but uh, uh, but then I want it to bleed out here so then I can just uh, get rid of these edges I want it to bleed out like that, like that. Uh, first, forget about this side. Just working on one side here. So you can see my edge loop goes flows like this and that. That means I can add in another edge loop here, uh, so that I can get the structure of uh, the handprint. Just make sure to also go in the other sides and uh, maintain the edge flow like that. Now, if I Pull this down a bit. If I drag uh, this edge just a bit down like that, I have uh, the print, but uh, I don't have any sharp edges. Now there are a few ways to do this. You can add you can add an edge loop like that, a sporting edge loop, and that it will give you uh, the fingerprint uh, like that. Uh, but uh, the problem with that now you're adding in extra geometry, and uh, when if you want to use this in a game environment, I then uh, this is extra geometry that is not going to be needed since we are going to add since we are going to turn off all the subdivisions all right you don't see uh, the purpose of that supporting edge loop when you have subdivision turned off so what i do is just use creases so shift e that should give me a sharp edge like that without any extra geometry so when we turn on simplify i know that uh, i've maintained a low poly count while having a sharp uh, while having a sharp geometry like that 
So uh, this is uh, the process we're going to be doing. So everything else is uh, looks a bit sim looks simple uh, for me. So yeah, the next video is going to be about uh, how I created this uh, this material here. And, uh, anyway, let's dive into the time lapse and uh, see how it goes. Thank you.